Let's talk about El Salvador, which issued a few headlines over the Christmas holiday. I think a lot of people kind of missed out on them. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is this price prediction from uh, President Nayib Bukele, 100K into 2022, which was, of course, like the price prediction most Bitcoin maxis had last year, and that did not happen. We're hovering around like $47,000 per Bitcoin. But that doesn't mean that he's not super bullish on Bitcoin going to the next year. He also sees two more countries making Bitcoin a legal tender, among other uh, kind of aspects around uh, Bitcoin going to the next year. I will say that they have bought the dip almost every single time Bitcoin has dropped down. So his money is where his mouth is. Another interesting headline that I want to get Naomi's take on is China and El Salvador have agreed to build a stadium together. China is going to give the funding and it will be built in El Salvador. This kind of follows up on a lot of different tactics, I guess I would say, that the communist government there has been using to kind of increase its presence globally. Uh, they go out, they fund these infrastructure projects in a lot of developing countries, and then later they can use them as collateral if the loan collapses. Uh, we saw this recently in Uganda, where an airport was seized by the Chinese government after they had funded it and built it, and then the Ugandan government couldn't pay back for it. So we kind of have a clashing of narratives here, which is this Bitcoin libertarianism, free yourself from the dollar. But then we also have China getting in here and bankrolling the Bukele regime and this new soccer stadium build out. So I really want to get your opinion on this. I mean, this is, it's pretty fascinating to see these two things kind of hit each other at the same time. Yeah, it's not disturbing at all to see El Salvador forming a happy little partnership with China and them just giving them all the money to, to build a stadium. I mean... There, there are a lot of things going on here. I think you're absolutely right, Will, that a lot of this has to do with China, you know, wanting to take things as collateral. Um, it's also really crazy to think that El Salvador is going to go into further debt to build a national stadium. Like, what? Aren't they trying to raise money to build a Bitcoin city as well? And they're trying to float this bond backed by the full faith of the El, Sol El Salvadorian government is now, like, partly owned by China. Like, I mean, these aren't really great economic decisions. And looking at the history of El Salvador, they haven't made great economic decisions. Uh, the best thing that they did was become dollarized because it was just a far more stable option than the Cologne, which they had up until 2001. The best decision they have made, I think, is exploring Bitcoin because I think that it is uh, just very interesting to see a government pull away from reliance upon US dollar. Um, very interesting in that Bitcoin is further being explored as this sound money alternative that's not controlled by any government. So I think that's very interesting. But then they, you're getting into bed with other governments, getting into debt with more governments, and China of all governments. This just doesn't seem like good news to me. But Zach, I'll throw it to you for your, your thoughts. Yeah, El Salvador. I mean, I was thinking about it like, you know, we see all these things through the lens of Bitcoin. And I was assuming that like China would have also have had to have seen this in like see China as dealing with the Bitcoin nation, right? And this is interesting to me, given that China has been adamant in its crackdown on Bitcoin and crypto uh, currencies over the last six months mm -hmm. or so. So the fact that they're sort of like also like kind of getting involved, maybe that to me was the thing that I was interested in. And I was curious what the uh, I'm curious what the thought process was on that one. You know, here's Bitcoin. We're, we don't want anything to do with it in our country, but hey. We want a piece of the El Salvador story. And that to me was what stood out. But yeah, El Salvador, man, just keeps getting, just keeps getting crazy. He just likes being in the headlines. He likes tweeting. He likes saying stuff. He's got a surprise. He's shilling a surprise announcement at the next Bitcoin conference. Uh, you know what? I'm not not entertained. I'll say that. <laughs> Jen, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen in 2022. Like it just felt like we were watching a movie when it came to what was happening with El Salvador last year. So I, I am both excited and frightened for the announcement of Bitcoin Miami out. this this summer. Is there a movie coming out? Yeah, there's or, like 45 documentaries just, being made about El Salvador and Bitcoin. Or, okay, well, yeah, that makes <laughs> that makes sense. You Thank you, Will. I'm a little I'm a little rusty, but so I mean, it's interesting that Bukele remains bullish on Bitcoin. He has to remain bullish, and I've said on the show before that it is frightening to think about what could happen there when we enter a bear market. And if that happens in 2022, um, it will be interesting to see how the country handles that and how the people of El Salvador will handle that. But Naomi, I think I saw your hand go up. 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with Zach's point as well. That was very interesting to see a country that's completely banned cryptocurrency in all forms embrace a country that's completely embraced cryptocurrency. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm wondering like what their game plan is. Why choose El Salvador as the nation that you want to help out and give money to and build this station? Like what was attractive about them in particular? So that's got some some questions arising for me. It's an interesting situation. But uh, Will, I'll throw back to you for some final thoughts. I'll just say what Zach said. This guy's always in the headlines. I, he just really popped on the scene last year, and he really can't stay away. I'm also kind of worried about how the Bitcoin community has gotten into uh, bed, so to speak, with, with this regime, which has like a lot of questions around it. Uh, and I do think, just to kind of like shout out crypto media, this is one place that it really does matter, where you have these regimes that are kind of working with the crypto industry, and there should be like some questions around it. So... I will applaud the crypto journalists who never sleep and always ask the questions.